What's up everybody? Thanks for joining us out here today on this beautiful spring day here on the VSO Gun Channel. The day started out kind of crappy with snow all over the ground, precipitation falling from the sky, and uh, the sun has come out, evaporated all the snow. Winter is over and I'm having a good day and I also just got in this large shipment of holsters here and I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to talk to you guys today about what I look for in a holster and if it makes sense to you maybe it'll influence the way that you think about holsters in the future I'm gonna say start off by saying that many of you may click off the video uh, very shortly because I'm about to say something very controversial C carrying a gun should be comforting not necessarily comfortable and what I mean by that is there are lots of things out there on the market that people have done to their holsters to market them as the comfortable option uh, that do not necessarily make them a better holster. And you should avoid those at all costs. So what I mean by that are things like squishy holsters, sticky holsters, any flexible material around the gun uh, that is designed to encase the firearm uh, that is supposed to make it more comfortable or give it a lower signature or anything like that. Um, hybrid holsters, those are the ones that have like a felt back with a, with a plastic front. Forget about all that stuff. Don't buy it. Throw it away if you got it. Get a real holster. Um, now that I've thoroughly pissed you all off, the reason uh, that is is because you need a rigid piece of material around that gun to, one, support it, and, uh, and two, connect it to your belt, and then three, you have to also realize that because we are uh, CCW carrying civilians or CHL or whatever um, license you have or permit you have to carry a firearm, that weapon is to be concealed, which is going to put it under a lot more undue uh, environmental stress from your day-to-day -day activity than it would be if it was just carrying outside the waistband rig like this guy right here. So it's no secret here that uh, we use NSR here at VSO and that is because it's made of some high strength um, unobtainium alloy here uh, that just absolutely makes it do everything uh, that you could ever want it to do. Guys, just a joke. It's Kydex, okay? And there are lots of Kydex manufacturers out there. Anybody who's saying that they've got some kind of high strength alternative to Kydex, Kydex works just fine. It's not the material that it's made out of, it's what you do with the material that's important. A uh, real quick shout out to my boys at Blacklist Industries uh, for uh, helping me trick out this Glock. Full video coming on this thing. I know you guys are asking. So uh, if we look at, take a look at this holster, this is my NSR outside the waistband. And we'll get to the other ones here in a second. Um, but this is the one that I use a lot here on the range because um, I like it outside the waistband for when I'm out here testing. But if we look at some of the features of this thing, uh, again, important features are that it has a sweat guard on this one. And we'll get come back to the sweat guards here in a second. Uh, the standard size loops here for your belt. So they go in right like that. Um, that, that works just fine. But you also notice that the magazine release is partially covered on this one. There are a few models over here that have it completely covered. Uh, but the reason that is, is because this is an outside the waistband holster, you have to think about the, the uh, gun pressing against whatever material is between you and the, your body and the holster and accidentally setting off that magazine release. However, if I take this magazine, and this is a fun stick, but it's not loaded to 30 rounds, uh, as per YouTube's stupid regulations. But if we take this and stuff it in here like this, I still have the capacity, if I need to, to eject this magazine while it's in the holster, if for some reason I need to perform like a one-handed reload or something like that. So there's a good example of why you may or may not want uh, your magazine release covered. Now. There's plenty of relief in here for any upgraded sights. So you can see that this has some uh, excess, and this gun is unloaded, guys. Uh, it has some excess race suppressor sights because that's what this gun is for, and it totally accommodates those just fine. Uh, the other major safety thing that is required in any holster that you have is that that trigger guard is fully shrouded, covered, with a hard piece of material so that that trigger cannot be actuated through your clothing, through anything that's in your pockets or anything like that. We have a full video on why that's a big deal. Uh, link in the description for that thing, but that is an imperative function. Now, this is a uh, 
Glock 17 holster, but with a Glock 19 in it with an extended barrel. These holsters are made to accommodate that. Now this one is a closed bottom, but it does have space to be able to drain uh, for both water and any particulate that is in there. I've gone ahead and swiveled the camera around here so that you guys can see what I'm doing because I'm gonna roll some stuff up in here tight and I want you guys to be able to see it without shadow. Uh, a lot of people will complain about uh, the cost of a holster and I understand where they're coming from because a lot of times this stuff can get expensive. It can especially get expensive if you have to buy it multiple times because you bought it wrong the first couple times. That stuff can add up. So uh, what I would say to you is select a manufacturer with a good reputation, solid track record, has a methodology to the madness on how they lay out their equipment and has a solid record of good customer service. Uh, do that and you should be squared away. Now, whenever you purchase something from an artisan, whether it is a pot made of clay, it is a piece of jewelry made of gold or a holster made of Kydex, whenever you have a um, someone who has established themselves uh, in a field working artistically on something uh, with a methodology uh, that's gonna cost real money. It's just the way it goes. Um, and there are certain things on certain holsters that may or may not be worth it to you. So I had a conversation with Dave from NSR about their holsters uh, at SHOT Show this year. And this one is nearly identical to this holster. It's, a, it's pretty much the same I mean, you can almost put a micrometer on it, and they do such a good job of replicating these things, and they are handmade, um, that you can't really tell a difference. Well, this one says NSR on it, and this one has that little thing on it right there. This is their new economy line, and what separates these two, one, obviously their color difference here, uh, but if you look, the edges of this are all polished. So when it's against your skin, like an inside the waistband or something like that, that edge, is very, very smooth. So smooth that it almost provides no resistance. This holster, by contrast, does not have those smooth edges. Now, they're not sharp by any stretch of the imagination, but they have not been polished to a mere sheen like these. Like, I bet you guys can even probably see a little bit of reflection in, in that versus this, not so much. So if that is important to you, then more power to you, but this one will do just fine for me. So I have a whole pile of Kydex here of uh, the same kind of uh, configuration. Uh, it's still quick ship. So if you guys aren't familiar with what NSR does, it's, it's Kydex holsters that are ready to go out the door. They have some custom capabilities as well, but their hot item is their quick ship stuff. It's like a couple days, it's to your door. Let's look real quick at what we got going on here. Uh, this one, another Glock holster. And as you can see, this one is open on the bottom, so it can fully drain, uh, and it decreases the profile of the Kydex, so if you want an extended barrel, it just sticks out the end a little bit, right, like that. This one is also one of the tuckable ones, and they also use a lot of, these are, uh, they, NSR was the people who turned me on to these. These are, uh, pull the, the dot, and this is a unidirectional uh, clasp here that loops around your belt and then it only comes it only goes on one way see it only goes on one way and it only comes off one way so I can't pull it like this I will break that strut before that comes off I have to pull it this way to get it off now this is tuckable and it has a strut right there uh, so that you can uh, you can tuck your your shirt uh, on the outside of that thing and conceal it behind a shirt if you have to wear a tucked in shirt or something like that. Now, uh, if we if we go further into this design, after I get this thing up. So if we look at how this thing was constructed, it is basically a folded piece of Kydex with some rubber pieces in there and those go right through those bolts, adjustable for tension. If you need more, you just tighten them down a little bit and they're also movable up and down. So another build here of similar design, you can see that we have a single tension lock right there and the magazine release is shrouded, but you can probably still get to it if you absolutely had to, but it will keep your uh, clothing from going there. But you'll notice open bottom again, but this is a four o'clock carry uh, with the two pull dots there. This is design, it is not a tuckable holster, but here we have accommodation for a light on the end of your gun. So that's neat. 
completely shrouded cannot get to that thing guaranteed uh, but we do have the two pull dots and a raised sweat guard there open at the front so ease of holster but against your skin, full shroud. Dual mag pouch designed to go on a belt there. So again, this is the non-profiled edge. Uh, not sharp, but still ready to go. Moving right along there, we have a tuckable magazine pouch there. Same technology as we covered before. Pull dot loop on a strut, uh, tuckable for your magazine. This is neat, a pocket holster. So this would slide down inside your pocket, and I've tested this beforehand. This even works really good with the stickazines as well, uh, because it keeps them right at the right level. But this, you know, weaves into your pocket and then holds the thing at the proper level so that you can get it. It's not rolling around inside your pocket. Me personally, I prefer to carry my magazine in my pocket instead of it in a pouch or in some kind of holder. But this is a really good option because it keeps it in the proper orientation for a reload. But uh, it's not flopping around free in my pocket. I don't dip, but y'all who do know what that is, NSR branded one. Uh, this is probably sent for one of my guys because I don't, I don't you know, use that sort of stuff. But what I do use are AR-15 magazines, and this thing goes right in there like this. And it, this has got to be a joke because I told him not to send me anything with mouse clips on them. So uh, I don't know if these are some kind of upgraded mouse clip or you know generation five million of the mouse clip or whatever, but it's still uh, a mouse clip. It even says mouse clip on the side of it. Uh, but it's the reason it's that way so that it can weave on your plate carrier if you want it to or on your chest rig or something like that, but still uh, it will work. Uh, I've used mouse clip stuff before on belts and you just have to tie them down real tight and it'll totally work just fine. Anyway, that is what I look for in a holster, and I hope that I uh, made a little bit of sense uh, for you guys what exactly it is that I look for when it comes to uh, purchasing my holsters. But that is all I've got for today. I am going to resume with my range activities. So thank you guys for joining us here today on the VSO Gun Channel, and we'll see you guys on a future video. Oh, by the way, uh, because of all the stuff that uh, YouTube's doing. I can't put any of the uh, links in the description box down below or any of the discount codes or anything like that. So you're gonna have to go over to the full 30 version of this video to be able to find that stuff or run a keyboard. Don't blame me. Blame, be mad at YouTube.